Two brilliant inventors, two bitter rivals. Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla were two of the 19th century's most influential scientists and businessmen, revolutionizing many key industries at the time, but most notably electricity. Their fierce battle over whose electric current was superior, also known as the War of the Currents, made both of them hate the other. In our modern world, Tesla is widely regarded as the hero of this story, no doubt in part due to the popularity of the electric vehicle that shares his name. Tesla's idealistic approach to science and the mystery surrounding his character has caused many to deify him. Edison, on the other hand, is infamous. He's best known not as a scientist, but as a businessman, and a ruthless one at that. He's known for stealing ideas, beating down his competition, and stabbing his colleagues in the back. Most people have a vague notion of Tesla and Edison's rivalry, but the details are a little fuzzy. Most people think that Edison stole Tesla's ideas, and those people are wrong. Don't get me wrong, Edison stole plenty of ideas in his day, but not Tesla's, not that we know of. In fact, Edison found Tesla's ideas to be too impractical. Many stories would have you believe that Edison and Tesla knew each other quite well, but that would also be false. This video intends to set the record straight. But before we dive into that, I want to ask you for a big favor. If you could please just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would really help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks a lot in advance. When Tesla was just starting his career, Edison was already very accomplished. Edison was an inventor, but he didn't think up truly revolutionary ideas. Instead, he tended to make improvements on existing technologies. His first success was the quadruplex telegraph, which he sold for $10,000. This would be worth around $230,000 today. He used that money to start Menlo Park, which was his first laboratory specifically intended for scientific innovation. He employed numerous scientists and inventors in his lab, and because of this, he got a lot of the credit for the inventions that were produced there. Edison received national fame for one specific invention, the phonograph, which unlike many of his other inventions, was entirely original. Many attribute the invention to Alexander Graham Bell, but in reality, Bell simply improved upon Edison's methods. This might be the first ever recording of Mary Had a Little Lamb, recorded by Edison himself on his original invention. The uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph, a uh, little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, it screeched from white and snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. In the late 1870s, Edison's lab got started working on problems of electricity. Another huge misconception is that Edison invented the light bulb. This is not true. A working bulb was invented all the way back in 1840 by a British scientist named Warren Delarue. The problem with Delarue's invention was that it used platinum, which was an expensive material. As such, his light bulb was impractical. Various other inventors improved upon the light bulb design, but they all had key flaws that prevented them from being commercially viable. This all changed when Edison got his hands on the problem. He and his team filed a patent in 1879 for a new way of making the filament inside the bulb, which resulted in the bulb lasting over 1,200 hours. Since it also used cheaper materials, this was a massive improvement and actually made electric lighting viable. As he was getting more involved in the problems of electricity, there came a very profound problem that needed to be solved. How to deliver electricity to all the places that needed it, this was the start of the War of the Currents, as Edison invented direct current, otherwise known as DC power, which he started to serve to customers in Manhattan and London. So where does Tesla fit into all of this? Well, believe it or not, all of this happened before Tesla even came onto the scene. While Edison was busy building his electricity empire, Tesla was busy gambling away his tuition allowance and flunking out of college. While no doubt brilliant and a hard worker, Tesla struggled with the traditional path, as so many other brilliant minds have. Despite his flaws, however, he was still able to get a job working for a branch of Edison's company in Paris. His job? To install Edison's incandescent lighting in indoor spaces all around the city. Tesla was a quick study, and his superiors took notice. They started giving him more challenging assignments, such as designing new components, and having him work on challenging engineering problems at other sites around Europe. 
Eventually, his reputation preceded him, and he was requested to move to New York to work at Edison Machine Works as a field engineer. Eventually, he was tasked with developing an arc lamp-based street lighting system. Arc lamps basically use an electric arc, also called a voltaic arc, which runs between metal electrodes in a glass bulb. Arc lamps are still used today in modern fluorescent lamps. Tesla became very engrossed in the project, but he was dismayed when the Edison company refused to move forward with his designs, possibly because Edison was still heavily invested in incandescent lighting. In his autobiography, Tesla also mentions that he was promised a sizable reward, possibly upwards of $50,000 for various machines, but he was never delivered the bonus, despite delivering the projects. It's highly likely that Tesla either made this story up or failed to understand a joke from his superiors, because at that time, $50,000 was worth the equivalent of today's $1.4 million, which would be an insane bonus to receive for completing a project. Regardless, these two issues caused him to leave the Edison company a mere six months after starting. Tesla believed in what he had been working on and decided to start his own company called Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing. And sure enough, one of his first projects was patenting the arc lighting system that had been rejected at the Edison company. It's interesting that Edison is regarded as the one who stole ideas from Tesla because, at least in today's world, any research and development that's carried out while employed by a company becomes the intellectual property of that company. Tesla took ideas that he had been developing while working at the Edison company, and by today's standard, that would be a breach of intellectual property law. Anyway, Tesla had some success with this company, but unfortunately was pushed out by his investors and fell on hard times. He also lost control of his patents, leaving him with nothing. But did he give up? Hell no. Later that same year, Tesla set up shop with two additional investors, and together the three of them set up Tesla Electric Company. It was here that Tesla started to design and develop his signature invention, an induction motor that ran on alternating current, or AC for short. Up until this point, only direct current had been introduced to the public. This is the type of current that Edison had been working on for years. Tesla didn't know it, but his invention would start the War of the Currents, a propaganda campaign amongst the largest electric companies over market share. The main difference between alternating current and direct current is that in alternating current, the electrons that flow through the lines frequently switch direction, alternating back and forth. In direct current, the electrons only flow in one direction. Alternating current is far superior for two reasons. The first is that there is a considerable loss of energy when the current travels over a long distance. This makes direct current much less efficient. Additionally, when electrons can switch directions, it allows the voltage to change quite cheaply, which is useful because different electric devices might require different voltages to operate most effectively. Once Tesla was able to produce a motor that ran on AC current and publicize it, the major electric companies took notice. The Westinghouse Electric Corporation offered to license Tesla's patent for the technology for $15,000 per year guaranteed payment, plus other cash payments and royalties. Obviously, Tesla agreed. Westinghouse was Edison's largest competitor, and as soon as they started to advertise the invention, the Edison company started a large disinformation campaign to discredit it. Worried that alternating current would cause them to lose contracts and hurt their bottom line, Edison began to publicize that alternating current was dangerous. Some speculate that Edison, who was more of a practical inventor rather than a scientist, couldn't understand the technology and feared it. He even went so far as to allow animals in public to prove that alternating current was not safe. One such animal was Topsy the elephant, who obviously succumbed to the electric current and died in 1903. Despite the obvious smear campaign by Edison, Eventually, alternating current won out with a couple of large contracts going to Westinghouse, which were eventually followed by other smaller contracts. Today, alternating current dominates the market, as most of our electricity is delivered in this manner. So it looks like Tesla actually beat Edison out in the War of the Currents. But does that mean he won? Not at all. At the time of his death, Tesla was almost penniless due to poor business decisions and failed experiments. Edison, on the other hand, died with a net worth of nearly $12 million. The modern equivalent would be $170 million. 
In the end, both inventors developed extremely important products that changed our world. It's interesting to me that Tesla actually got his start working for Edison. Neither one is a completely good or bad person, and in reality, they actually didn't know each other very well. While they may have been competitors, there is no evidence that Thomas Edison stole ideas from Tesla. In reality, they most likely just viewed one another with a quiet contempt, the way a confident man condemns a rival. If it weren't for their competition, our electrical grid might look entirely different today. Hey guys, thanks for watching the episode. Make sure to click that like button and subscribe. Thanks and have a good one.